Hello, good morning and welcome back to the fish locker out on the shore. We have some massive spring tides at the moment. That usually means one thing with us. That means we're going out foraging. And we've got a lot of wind in one direction at the moment. So I've come to a new area of shore. I've not actually been to it before. But knowing what the type of habitat's like, I'm hoping for things like shellfish. Clams, cockles, mussels, oysters, scallops, anything like that. But also, because it's such a big low tide, there could be anything. We're about an hour and a half before low tide, so I'm going to be working my way down towards the low tide line and then working my way back in as it comes in. We will just see what we can find. I've got my foraging bucket, I've got a positive attitude, <laughs> and let's go. I'm just making my way down to where I'm supposed to be hoping to go, and you can see with all this, there's an awful lot of seaweed that's washed in, and you can tell by the colour of the water. That's from all the bad weather we've been having. But I have noticed that in amongst all the seaweed, there are quite a lot of big winkles. And this is what I've managed to collect so far as I've been walking along. This is going to be the mainstay of today. These are cockles. And you don't want to be collecting them unless they're about that big. But also, there is a carpet shell clam and a little scallop shell. So I know that there are some scallops around here actually now that that's dried out that scallop shell has got a lot of fish eggs inside of it so i'll go and put that back in the water but also look at that that's a tooth it's either a horse or a cow's tooth I don't know how well you can see those in there, but it's full of little tiny eggs. This, on here, on this piece of bladder rack, is called Sporobis. Well yeah, every type of seaweed, serrated rack, bladder rack, sugar kelp, sea lettuce. That there. I don't know, it looks like a Venus clam. There's a cockle. There's one. These are the tops of like a mason worm. Little worm that lives under the sand. And somewhere around here there will also be razor clams. What I'm doing here, what I'm doing here is I'm just scanning along. Just scanning around. Because when you get bad weather like we've had, it stirs all the bottom up and it sometimes it brings the clams to the surface. I mean, all these ones here, I've just found up on the surface. That there is a gaper clam shell. But this here, if you can see that, that is part of a sea potato skeleton. I might find some more of these. Here is a, a dogfish egg. All I'm doing is just scanning around. Just checking along little areas like this. This is where you'll know what you've got. There is a China limpet. Painted top shell. That is an Artemis shell. You've got normal limpets. Carpet shells. There's a warty Venus. Razor clams. Now these crows, the crows and the seagulls, they aren't stupid. They're down here for the same reason I am, they're looking for a feed. So they're gonna, <laughs> they'll be with me, they'll be following me down. This here, look. That, there, that little scallop shell there. It's a variegated scallop. Yeah, look. 
this that is called a smooth clam so on this beach there's everything from carpet shells to smooth clams and these little striped venus shells People who've watched our other foraging videos will know immediately a king scallop. It's synonymous for like a shellfish. A big king scallop. Well these ones here, these are queenie scallops. Yeah, look. And all I'm doing is I'm just working my way along. Now I don't often collect, I don't often collect queenies just because they're, they're small but that one's that one's quite a big one and I thought we'd give them a try but all we're doing is we're looking along for any of the clams rather than going out and digging about in all the mud and I don't really like doing that because it disturbs what's there it disturbs all the worms it disturbs all the little, all the little plants moon bad, bad weather it'll do that work for me so what I'm doing is I'm just working along Look at that one there. There's another little queenie scallop. A bit too small that one though. There's another carpet shell clamp. I had to put a camera down because this this rock took two hands to lift. But there's a brittle star, a porcelain crab, some little tiny sea urchins, furrowed crabs, and there's one, two, three, four, Dahlia and enemy, five. Little tiny starfish. I have gone down, gone down the area beach, and I've got to an area of rocky shore now. Now we've got got a mixture of clams in there. Most of them are Artemis shells and cockles. What I'm going to do is we've got another half an hour until it's low tide, so I'm going to make a little bit of a walk along here, just because. There's, there's loads of interesting stuff like this over here, look here. Now doesn't that look like a hedgehog's back? Like a golf ball sponge. I think that's called a chimney or a turret sponge. But there's sponges and sea slugs and all sorts. Like that there, look. That is the egg casing, this here. That's the eggs of a sea lemon, it's a type of sea slug. Yeah, you just, you never know, I mean the tide, very rarely does it come down this far. Oh, have we found one? Ah, oh, thought we'd got another clam there, but it's empty. Like a Pac-Man. Yeah. You just never know what you're going to find. So I'm going to keep having a rake about around here. And then when the tide starts to turn, we'll make our way back. Let's try this one here. Oh, oh wow. There, you can see behind this seaweed, those are Dahlia and Enemy. I'm going to be able to show you, am I? And a scallop shell. There is a type of sea slug. Oh, and a little cushion star. This is a baby variegated scallop. Get this put back. 
in like this little cove area here, there's just sponges everywhere. But that there is sea slug eggs. I don't know if you can see this here. This bright purple here. Some more dahlia in me. But this, if I can just tease it off the rock. That is a nudie branch. That is a sea lemon. The type of sea slug. It's some fantastic colours on. I mean this one, I don't know how vivid you can see it, but it's pink and purple. Put it back on there. It's all sorts. <laughs> I don't actually know what that is. Given its teeth, shape of its head, that actually could be a conger eel. I think it probably was. It's seagulls breakfast. This little area of rocky coast. I'm going to go maybe about another 15 20 yards, have a look at them rock poles, and then start heading back. Because I've got half a bucket of clams here. This could be delicious. Well, um, what I might do is when the water clears out, I'll come for a snorkel around there because it does look fantastic. That is a massive snake lock anemone. Now these, underneath the UV light, they glow back at fluorescent green. I think they're lovely. There are some lovely anemone in there. But here, there is one of the sea lettuce, one of the um, sea lemons. One of those sea slugs actually laying those eggs look just become detached from the rock. Come on, hang on. I took him up there. There you go. They feel like the back of a toad. I don't know if you can see them, they are they are really bumpy. Yeah. Get them in all different colours. I've found them yellow, orange, red, and purple. Yeah, tides at the bottom of the ebb now. We'll start making our way back. What I've got here is I've just got a little bit of a stream draining off the beach and it's washing all the sand away. And it's digging the clams out for me. I mean, yeah, true, a lot of them. You've got to go through quite a few empty shells. But these are the mason worms that I was talking about earlier. You know what I was talking about earlier when you see like the little tiny bits sticking out? You know, this is what they look like underneath. There's one there just about to be washed away. Look. See? Yeah. I'm just going to have a little bit of a walk up here and see if I can't find any more clams. This one here is called a stingwinkle and it just looks like a whelk. This is a winkle 
and that's a stingwinkle. Now this is this is a grazer that goes round eating algae, like these little tracks. That's from winkles, and that one is carnivorous. Like like those dog whelks there, these ones will feed on the other shells. A nice little haul there now. I'm glad I found one. I was waiting for this to show you. This is an invasive Pacific rock oyster. This is dead. This is they usually go top on here. But that's a Pacific rock oyster. Whereas this is a native European flat oyster. Now you can see there it's flat. It sits flat on a seabed like that. Whereas a rock oyster they connect to rocks like this. They make their own reefs. So this is the native one. This is the invasive one. Now I aren't a massive fan of oysters. So I'm gonna put that I'm gonna put this one back. But yeah, there's your oysters. I followed the tide all the way down and I followed it back up and I'm just making my way back to the van. I'll just show you what we've got. We've got a cracking haul of clams there. The majority of what we've got is made up from cockles. These are cockles, common cockles, and they are delicious. Now, I did pick up three decent sized queenie scallops. I've never taken queenie scallops before in a video because because they're quite small. It's a lot of chew for not an awful lot of meat. Now some of the subscribers have asked, so I'm going to show you. Now we have got some cut trough shells. These are smooth Artemis. Cross cut carpet shell. And these ones here are striped Venus clams. So we've got half a dozen, half a dozen different types in there. The area where I've collected fruit I'm sorry, the, the rooks, <laughs> I'm near a rookery, you can probably hear them all. The area where I collected these clams from, it was a clean sandy beach, but they will have a bit of sand in them. Now, if you're going to eat these fresh off the beach, you're going to get a bit of grit in there. Of course, I'm going to take these home to cook, I'm going to allow them to purge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill the, fill the bucket up full of clean seawater and leave them overnight. Now, that should give them a chance to spit any sand or any grit or any mud out. If, you've, if you're picking them up from an area that's really muddy, that's really silty, you might have to soak them for 48 hours. After 24, change it for clean water, keep going. When they've all purged out, we'll take them out with gyms. That's them soaking for 24 hours now. And the water was clean when it went in, and I don't know if you can see how many particles it's got in it now. So what I'll do, is I'll change the water. Change the water for some fresh and have them soaking for another 24 hours. There, look. See how dirty the water is? That's how much that many clams have spat out. There, look. That's how much debris and particles. Just that, them few clams have spat out, look. James and I have brought the clams around to Jim's. It's, it looks like we've possibly disturbed Jim in something. I'm, I'm assured that it isn't a skirt, that it is a kilt. Uh, 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 hello, welcome to Spargo's Kitchen. Uh, St. Piran's Day, so uh, Carol thought it'd be a nice gesture to uh, Cornishmen all over the world if I uh, break out our drinking tartan. So, yeah. Here we go. And rig boots. Uh, Perfect. Rig boots and my uh, 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 Japanese uh, long underwear. Uh, spring is here, the sun is out, but there's a decided uh, chill in the air. So I'm not shedding the, the long garments. I'd be pottering around in the shed and the gut garden. So these, have had, these have had two lots of a soaking. First 24 hours, there's still a bit of grit at the bottom. So they've soaked for nearly 48 and they're all nice and clean. And um, oh well, I'll just pass you over to Jim to tell you what I'm going to be doing with them. We've got a mixture of clams and cockles in there. And what I'm going to do is big pan, 
but it get that nice and hot. Oh, I just boiled the kettle. A splash of hot water in there, maybe a quarter of a pint. I'll tip all the clams in, lid on, steam them till they pop open, and then we'll shut them off and drain the liquid into the jug, and then we can start cooking. And we're going to make a mixed a clam cockle chowder, and I shall do a got some tin tomatoes left over from breakfast the other day. So I'm going to do a tomato based pasta sauce. And we'll put the clams and cockles through that. Uh, James is very busy with his uh, colouring pens. James has already French started on the nibbler. French stick. And you're drawing some pictures, aren't you? And I'm finished. Yep. So, uh, right, I'll get on with uh, these. It's very hot water in that pan. Lid on. Couple of minutes. Uh, beginning to go, they've had about a minute. Uh, leave them. Another couple of minutes, and whilst I'm waiting, I'm going to finally chop the three medium onions, and then I'll put the pasta sauce and the chowder. I think we should be uh, there. Let's stop those now. So, well, what was that? Uh, not minutes. Four, not. Just over three minutes, I suppose. We must get more professional at this, John. What would the what would the professional say? I've no idea. Would you listen if you would? Would you listen to him if he started talking? Uh, oh, here's Carol. Hello. Hello. Uh, uh, no, come in. If this was all your idea. So, so that we'll put that through a really fine sieve because there are bound to be some yeah i was just looking there is a oh there is look at that in the bottom so even though we purged them there was still a little bit in there so, yeah. oh that is like it's salty core oh, it's like drinking the sea but it has a in a strange way it has a nice flavor it's oh Yes, there's something. Not I'll, I'll have a try it up then. I've scalded my fingers and I'll have a try. Don't you put your fingers in because I'm not sure where you've had yours. <laughs> I know where mine have been. They've been in hot soapy water and a scrubbing brush. There's a teaspoon. Yeah. Ah, don't wait. No, oh. Wait, wait for the aftertaste. <laughs> it's, it's like. Yeah. It's, it's like being on beach when you're a kid and giving a mouthful of sea. But then at the same time, afterwards it's... It's rather pleasant, isn't it? Yeah, once you get past the initial, like, kick in your mouth through being incredibly salty. I'll just... A little tiny bit right now. I was just going to say there we've got the smooth Artemis shells. These are your cross-cut carpet shells. Cockles. Got some little, wherever they are, in there, striped Venus, and that is your creamy scallop. Oh, it smells really nice. It just smells like the sea, doesn't it? It's lo uh, lovely. Right, I've got two pans. Uh, this one's going to be for the clam chowder. I've got some. Uh, Bit of rapeseed oil and a knob of butter. Just going to let that warm. Uh, this one uh, just has some rapeseed oil. We're going to sweat down the onion. And uh, Four well, goodish cloves of garlic. You must come over to the allotment, John, because it is fabulous out there. 
that your tulips you brought me from Amsterdam many years ago are looking magnificent. Um, and garlic and uh, thyme, uh, dried thyme. It's a little bit easier to use them uh, fresh, but a little goes a long way. Try right, the very fine uh, sea salt that we have there. Draw out the onion. Uh, I'll put the shells back into your blue bucket. Me and James will take them back to the beach when we're finished. So they're nicely open, the meat just pops out. Any See there the difference between one of the clams and one of the cockles. I'm going to put the camera down, I'm going to give Jim a hand. Right, we're finished. Finished picking out all the clams. These are the three queenie scallops that I took. So, like I said, the, there's not an awful lot of meat on them, but there is a lovely little nugget. And, out of all that, we only had one that didn't open. Now, anybody that's watched our videos before, we've been eating shellfish like this. When you're cooking them, if they don't open, discard those ones. For whatever other reason, there could be four or five different reasons why it hasn't opened, but that's a bad one. Now, people will argue against this and they'll say, oh yeah, well I've always eaten. As far as I'm concerned, this one cockle is not worth enough to risk food poisoning. I've always stuck by that and I've never got ill from eating touch wood, from eating shellfish like this. So yes, when you're cooking them, if they don't open, discard them. Uh, uh, right, uh, uh, two things have happened since we spoke a minute or two ago. We were so captivated uh, with the fish that I caught the onions, but hey ho, it's just us. <laughs> you're, you're not paying uh, 15 pounds for a bowl of this. So a little over browned onion ink wouldn't matter. And something else, I forgot to put the bacon lardons into the I would have fried those off with the onions. So I'm warming a pan up and we're just going to rescue the situation. <laughs> so, yeah. Well it shows that it's honest. Remember there is uh, no such thing as failure just, and we learn by making mistakes. So, uh, I just get too excited. Right, so I'm just going to fry that off. I put in there, John, a couple of ounces of plain flour. And now going to. Right, there's my bacon finally fried off. So just stirring that into the cooked flour mixture now. This is a very fine uh, gauze sieve. Still going to put a couple of sheets of pot, uh, kitchen paper in the bottom. Uh, right, that's taken up that bit of stock nicely. So just leave that for a second and we'll come back to the... This is going to be our pasta pan. So uh, the onions are cooked down. Just a little bit of colour. Put in our bacon lardons. This is smoked bacon, you mean? Uh, smoked bacon lardons. Sorry. Wooden spoon is covered in... So we'll let that bake and back to our stock. That's it. If you slow and you decant it, most of the grit will stay to the bottom anyway. It will. It? Don't uh, tip the jug quietly. Take your time. There's nothing uh, worse than having a bit of grit in your mouth. Well, may maybe one or two other things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can think it. Yeah. Not worse is it when you bite into something or you go onto the beach and you have your sandwiches and there's a little lot of sand in it. May your muscles always be open and free of grit. But that's about a three quarters of a pint of our liquor. Uh, liquor. Uh, uh, I'm going to put about half of this milk in. Gently. 
gently stir to all come together. Are you singing when again over there, James? Nice. Here's a handful of chopped parsley. That's going in with our bacon. And the onion tomato. mix. This is for the tomato pasta. Fry that up. And there's the remains of our. Now, go in carefully this time. And you can see all the grit there at the bottom, guys. Right? There, stop. There, it is. Yep. So even though they were purged twice, that's what's come up. <laughs> this is just a small baking potato and I flattened the sides off so it sits on the board without rocking around and we'll pop that into the, the milk. I haven't put the milk away yet because as the chowder the milk heats up the flour will continue to thicken so we may need to let it down this is the remains of tinned tomatoes just chopping them up roughly with a knife tube of tomato puree what would equate to a couple of heat dessert spoons I suppose Yes, well, there's the basis of the chapter. Very low light. Let the potato soften. And I'm just reducing this probably by about a third. Just so again, leave that on a low light. And what I'm going to add now is a tin of um, anchovy fillets. Just going to take a couple out. These add a lovely background taste. The anchovy will dissolve into the sauce. A couple of those in there and it just adds that the, the luster to the t taste. It's unidentifiable. You, you would never know that there's anchovy in there. So it's all on the simmer. Uh, when you come back, we'll get ready to cook the pasta and finish the chowder. There's the ch chowder mix. So it's come together beautifully and the potatoes are soft. There's still a little resistance. So it's time I've got some peas and some beans which I've Chop the beans up. It's time for those to go in now. I'm going to finish it with a little double cream. I was just saying to John, uh, if I had thought about it, I would have got a from the supermarket or the fishmongers a little piece of salmon and a small piece of smoked haddock. Carol can't eat shellfish and we could have used exactly the same recipe. Split the base and she would have enjoyed that with the, with the fish in it. And if you, you're not a fish eater, you could do the same with the bake, smoked bacon. You could even dice up some chicken meat or if you had the remains of a roast chicken, you could make the soup and flake in if it's the roast chicken meat. That's actually, that's a possibility we might just do in the future. We might just have, like a chowder day, we could do a... A variety of chowders. Mm. Oh, we, all we need is the lovely uh, little um, crackers that you get in the Americas. <laughs> uh, I, oh, I've got some uh, mini cheddars. We'll have this with crusty <laughs> bread and mini cheddars. Uh, that was the pint of milk you brought in. Uh, I'm just going to add 
not so enough just for a couple of cups of just shy of a pint yes I'm gonna cook some spaghetti big pan lots of water you cannot have too much water and salt plenty of salt in a rolling the best type of boil this is yeah some spaghetti that was open. So I'm just going to uh, drop it in. Well, that's a quarter of a pint of double cream. The peas and the beans are cooked through. Now for thought, pasta. No. Carol doesn't eat shellfish. So John very sensibly said, why don't we take a spoonful of this out for her now before the seafood goes in there, which is what we've done. Cockles and clams. And... Uh, I don't, where should we have these? In the pasta? It's, it's wherever you we'll, want. We'll find them you, easier. You could hide them and it could be like a lucky dip, couldn't it? It would. We'll put the three little queens in there. And we're not going to attempt to cook them anymore. We're just going to take up the heat. I think what I'm going to do, just to make this even more richer and smoother, is just put a knob of butter into that. So even though we used the stock out of the clams and it was incredibly salty. Ooh, it was. These are not by any stretch of the imagination salty. The remains of the parsley into there. And for good measure, a bit into there. Oh no. It was going to go, wasn't it? Well, it's three things, isn't it? It's uh, caught the onions. <laughs> Forgot to cook the bacon in the sauce. Ah, now I've done a blood splatter. Oh, well, it's all right. You've got the three out of the way. Yes, thank goodness. Well, let me clean it up before you slip over. Right. Pasta pan. Yeah. Drain. Knob of butter in there. Our pasta. This happens to be spaghetti. You might have linguine or any other. Let's stir that in. Now, this is how I cook pasta. This is how I have always cooked pasta. I was fortunate enough to spend some of my early teenage years living with a family in Italy, in Genoa. And Mama Rosa taught me to cook pasta and she taught me to make uh, pasta sauces. So uh, if you do it different, that's fine by me. But <laughs> that sounds like this is going to be a controversial issue. Well, yeah. well uh, you won't believe this, John, but some people think that you have to put oil in the water to stop it, the pasta sticking. What well, the oil would just sit on the surface? Well, yeah. The reason pasta sticks is because there's insufficient boiling water to cook it. And we need to have a taste of the pasta. Well, there, we've been told. Now, what we're going to do for is couple of spoonfuls of that. Parmesan cheese. I won't put this on the top of the dish, John, because you're no lover of Parmesan. Nope. So you can eat it without. But try it with a bit of... I will, I will try it. Uh, I'll put the chowder into bowls because it's... Okay, well, I'll I'll call everybody in from the garden because they're out playing big Jenga. And we'll, uh, we'll get sat down. There we are, all plated up. We have clam chowder. Carol is just having chowder chowder. Just chowder chowder. And Jim is having <laughs> clam chowder with... Mini cheddars. Mini cheddars. <laughs> James is pecking at his bread like a little chicken. <laughs> Crumbing the place up. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah, and we've just got uh, some crusty bread to go with it, so I'm going to get stuck in. Delicious. And butter. Mm. Yeah, they, the mini cheddars look like they, they really, <laughs> they really add to it. Mm. That chowder was absolutely delicious as well.
Carol's really enjoyed hers. Licked the spoon and the bowl. Jim's dove straight into some of this. And James is working his way through everything else that we've got on the table. But this, that's one of the little queenie scallops. There's another one there. Yeah, so far it's been absolutely delicious. I'm going to have to try some Parmesan cheese. Aren't I? Yeah. Yeah. Eat some pasta without and then have some with Parmesan cheese. And if you don't like it, he do doesn't, have, he yeah, don't have to eat it. The sauce and the clams. Are you going to have some? Are you going to put this in your mouth? Yeah. Okay, well you just wait there then. Yeah, I think the anchovies would be too much for Jane. Oh, the sauce is delicious. It's sweet and yet you can you can just taste a little bit of the salt, can't you? you can the, it, that's it, off it, the anchovies. Taste, yeah, yeah. Just taste the soup the, and those little queenie scallops. Oh, they are just the little clouds mm. of joy. Yeah, all it is is they. If you didn't know it was clams, you would just think it was little bits of meat. Hmm. It really is quite delicious. Oh, that's it, John. Just smell it. Sir. Bring it. Don't, don't oh, inhale it. Yeah. Oh, it just smells like feet. No, John. No, please. <laughs> no need to be unnecessary. <laughs> Put yourself off. That, that isn't really. No, no. no, no, no. Come on, stop, John. Uh, now, uh, stir <laughs> that in. Stop being a big, big boy. Never mind you. Big, yes, big yes, boy. James. Uh, uh, no violence at the table, please. Right. That's it. Now. Load it up, John, and remember, if you don't like it, <laughs> you, what what do we say, James? If you don't like it, you don't have to eat it. Yeah, yes, yeah, but watch, you've James. got to try it. But he's eating it. That's it. He's put it. No way, that's this. Now we have to listen for the verdict. Does that improve it or not? I can taste it. Yes, that's not what I asked. <laughs> but you prefer it without. I prefer it without the Parmesan. That's quite. A yeah, it's um, well done for trying, John. I'm trying to explain it, it just brings like a little tiny bit of sourness to it, doesn't it? It's it's, a, it's not sour as in like you, you taste something, you think, oh, that's that's sour. But it just it's. I'll it's not cut salty. You it's not sweet, is it? It's um, uh, lovely. It's got another flavour to it. It's only so you can stand there. Right? There we are. <laughs> Jim enjoyed that so much that he was wearing some of it on his face. Uh, right. It was absolutely delicious. We have practically licked the plates. Um, I don't. I think. I think probably the chowder was was my favourite. Not just because the power was on that I haven't changed. But the, um, yeah, you're right. It was. It was more of a, a stronger flavour, wasn't it? I think from the anchovies. Mm. Oh yes, it's a very adult flavour. Uh, both absolutely delicious. Thank you very much, Jim. Again, Jim likes it. Enjoyed that. Mm. Uh, I hope you enjoyed joining us out on the shore and with Jim at Spargo's Kitchen. And what do we say now, James? Bye from the fish locker. Bye from the fish locker. And goodbye from the Spargo's Kitchen. And goodbye from Carol. <laughs> say bye bye, Carol. Bye bye, Carol. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.